Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. SpaceX delays next Falcon 9 launch. Small UAV operator is fined $3,000. Impounded airplane gets airborne. I'm Brie Cross, it is September 3rd, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. SpaceX will delay its next Falcon 9 launch as it continues to investigate a June 28th accident that resulted in the loss of a booster and a Dragon cargo vessel headed to the International Space Station. It's reported the announcement was made at a scientific forum being held in Pasadena. SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell said that the company is, quote, a couple months away from the next flight, end quote. After the accident, SpaceX founder Elon Musk said that the company would test every helium tank strut on its boosters and not rely on a subcontractor's certification of their strength. The failure of a strut has been identified as the cause of the catastrophic failure of the rocket. Last week, NASA Administrator Charles Bolden said in a letter to SpaceX that the agency would conduct an independent review of the cause of the accident. SpaceX says it has more than 50 orders for launches worth more than $7 billion on its books. Clients include NASA, the U.S. Air Force, foreign governments, and commercial satellite companies. This report comes under the heading of Make Sure You're Up to Date on the Rules. UAV operator Robert Edwards got caught up in a regulatory change that resulted in $3,000 in fines levied by the New Zealand government for flying his aircraft over an event in Palmerston North in New Zealand. Edwards had been contracted by the City Council to take some photos of the event using his UAV. However, he was not aware of a recent rule change that required UAV operators to get the permission of a landowner and the air traffic control unit overseeing the airspace of an intended flight. He got turned into the CAA and fines were levied. According to the report, he tried the excuse of, I didn't mean to do it, and he asked the City Council for some help. As could be expected, the council said he was hired as a contractor and it's not their problem, and the CAA was not sympathetic. Since being fined, Edward says he's done four or five jobs and has done everything right, which sounds like a good business plan to us. After the break, small airplane in England finally gets away. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Last month, pilot Martin Field did what any pilot would do in such a situation. He was flying from Cornwall to Kent in the UK in his vintage Jodel airplane when the weather soured. He looked for a place to land safely, and his best choice was a closed airport at Plymouth on the south coast of Devon, England. He landed safely, but that's when his trouble began. Fields Jodell was impounded by the leaseholder of the former airport. They said the landing was an act of trespass and would not let Field fly his airplane away when the weather cleared. They even blocked the airplane from moving with a large concrete block. However, after a couple weeks of negotiating, Field was finally allowed to fly the Jodell back home. He was required to validate the plane's airworthiness and prove he had liability insurance. It is also reported he had the help of ALPA UK in getting things straightened out. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero community update. However, today our report is not about a member of the Aero community. 
It's about the Aero community itself and how our Airborne Partnership Initiative fits into the picture. The Airborne Partnership Initiative, we call it the API, is a plan developed by ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to build a synergistic, industry-wide aviation aerospace news program. Our aim is to grow this program to include a significant portion, if not a majority, of the aviation world's pivotal organizations, interests, and viewpoints. ANN is an organization that lives and breathes within the realm of communication, and communication through our Airborne Unlimited online TV broadcast is where our API members see the greatest benefit for their participation in the Airborne Partnership Initiative. Partners will have the ability to disseminate their near-immediate breaking news with each daily program, grow their outreach among their constituency and well beyond, and utilize the services of ANN and Aero TV staff to get it done. Our plan is to bypass the usual press releases and news coverage regarding companies and organizations, and to enable our API members to provide innovative, expert, informed input for Airborne Unlimited subject content. This means your unique message will be translated into professionally produced programming by knowledgeable aviation and aerospace experts. For the first time, dedicated programming will be made available for the aviation and aerospace industries and organizations to have their stories accurately told by aviation and aerospace news media professionals. Your unique message will be seen and heard. After these messages, five CFIs become master instructors. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI-340 Quattro TSO airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Five instructors have received for the first time or renewed their master instructor designation in the month of August. The Master Instructor designation is a national accreditation recognized by the FAA and revered by the industry. NASA has awarded a contract for the construction of a new Mission Launch Command Center at the agency Wallops Flight Facility. The new facility will serve as the hub for interfacing with and controlling rockets, their payloads, and associated launch pad support systems. The telescope structure for NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has been delivered to the Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. This paves the way for the integration of the 18 hexagonal mirrors that form the core of its operation. When the third Boeing built in Marsat 5 satellite, which is now in orbit, becomes operational later this year, it will provide the coverage necessary for worldwide high-speed broadband access. The Marsat network will be the first high-speed KA band broadband network to span the world. The FAA has proposed a $211,000 civil penalty against Dukes Aerospace of Northridge, California. The FAA alleges that Dukes failed to include four of its safety-sensitive employees in random drug and alcohol testing pools. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Here's a report we are happy to make, and we must admit we're not surprised. United States National Aerobatic Champion and U.S. Team Pilot Rob Holland won the gold in the final freestyle at the World Championships. 
Fourteen pilots flew in the final program of the 28th World Aerobatic Championships prior to the huge air show that was staged at the Chateau France Airfield, which has served as home for the championship competition over the past couple of weeks. This was Holland's third consecutive victory in this program, at which he really excels, and scored almost 300 points ahead of the second-place pilot. Holland flew his MXS in the competition after shipping it via cargo aircraft to Europe earlier in the month. Never before has a pilot achieved three victories in a row in this program. We at ANN congratulate Rob and all those that helped him make the journey to the World Aerobatic Championship competition. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.